मानस संचर रे ब्रह्मणी 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 मा सो ओवर योर लॉन्ग जर्नी विथ म्यूजिक वॉट स्टार्टेड ऑफ perhaps along the conventional style has moved on to you often test boundaries you're always trying to innovate and come up with new projects was there a particular incident or an instance when you decided to explore and go out or was it a gradual change i i i don't think it, this is my my opinion um i think there is usually never one instance in these changes that happen i think it culminates or shall we say compounds itself in one incident that the human being notices but it's something that's always uh, happening in the background it's a process that's happening in the background it's a gradual uh, movement that happens so in my case i can really see this gradual movement i can see glimpses of this movement even now and many of this is done post facto uh, you don't actually see it when it happens now i look back at uh, my own Uh, trajectory as a human being, and uh, that's very closely linked to my trajectory as a musician. I can't separate the two. I I I find it difficult to separate the two. Um, and I think there are many things. I see glimpses of these possibility of changes even far before than I did then. I would have never noticed it then. I didn't notice it. So I think there are uh, many things that happen gradually, and of course then there is some inflection. And the inflection is actually a point when the person themselves notice. so that incident by itself i don't think is the cause for the transformation but it's the obviousness of the transformation that that incident portrays i mean yes i can find a few instances that probably have that but i don't think they're so relevant i think this has been a long process uh, of whatever change uh, good bad or ugly or beautiful or not beautiful is is uh, is people's opinion that they have no sort of right habit but um, It's been a long, uh, long, long process, and I, I'm still just traveling. <laughs> One of your really interesting such projects that I read about was how you brought together a, a very secular performance by bringing together gospel, Sufi, and Nama Sankirtana music all in one package in a town. um can you tell us about that experience in chennai, in chennai? In chennai. so this is part of uh, one of the uh, uh, work that we do together as a collective group just in the rules and this is part of what we call the rural or kapu kumbhra and uh, the vira is not only at during chan feb when it happens at the year but we also do we try to do events in the year and uh, i remember it was a time when there was a lot of conversations happening like it's happening now across the world on the idea of religion and uh, religious choices and religious discrimination and the complexities that lie there and uh, i think as a group we felt it's, it's a very important let's just celebrate the religions you know let's just celebrate the religions that we have and every religion has celebrated itself artistically whether it is architecture whether it is painting whether it is music every religion is like um and we said how do we do this and we thought of uh, just bringing on stage three art forms which are religious art forms and just presenting them there was no discourse there was no discussion there was no debate uh, nothing i mean we just felt let's just put it on the stage and if we did it uh, at space i mean there was little complexity in that because we were supposed to do it on the deep sands and uh, Uh, we were not permitted at the last minute to do the beat sense for 
these are little battles that you need to fight. But we need to fight. <laughs> and uh, we, we moved it uh, very quickly to spaces, which is Chandralekha's home, uh, which now Saran Menon, art critic, uh, historian, manages. Mm-hmm. And so we had uh, Tamar Sufi music uh, from Nagur. Uh-huh. We yeah. had um, Tamar gospel music from students of Loyola College. And we had a kid. And one followed the other. And it was just people who came and sat and listened to it went back. And uh, it, was a, it was a very precious evening. Is there a chance that you would bring this sort of a project to say the mainstream audience or on your tours abroad? It's a great idea. I mean, we'll have to see how it's possible. I think that it's uh, uh, the work that most of us are involved in, which I'm involved in, um, is primarily that raises a lot of questions of political, philosophical, aesthetic, social questions. And I think it's a fair point that maybe we should travel with it also. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can. I think I think North America also needs uh, uh, curations that uh, create what I love to call intersections. I think all you can do like is create. I think the thing about an intersection, like like an intersection when you're uh, on the road, is that you have all kinds of people coming to the signal at the intersection. When they cross each other, we have no clue what can happen. I think these are all intersections where we try and, uh, shall we say, invert and subvert habituations. Uh, it's the calculation is done consciously to invert and subvert habituations. Everybody, it's not just one type of people. We are all habituated. We are all conditioned, and that's how human beings are. But uh, the moment you take one conditionality out, then you allow yourself to be that much more vulnerable. And in that vulnerability, there is a possibility that something very, very beautiful happens to you. And uh, I think art allows for that possibility. And uh, yeah, I think we can, we should, we should think about curating something um, that raises these kind of, you know, to, to make yourself, and I've said this before, discomfort is the most beautiful thing in life. The more uncomfortable you get with yourself and your experiences, the more you will learn about yourself. And that's something I am convinced about because I think I've learned, learned much more when I put myself consciously or unconsciously, many times unconsciously, into positions where I am just so uncomfortable in my own skin. And that just reveals my own limitations and, and reveals who I am. And I think art, curation, should do that. Art should do that. Art is not about just satisfying your own habits. I think we have better things to do, better things to do with art. And I agree with you, maybe North America is a place we can look at it. Maybe, I don't know. Let's yeah. see. You have been working for a long time on freeing Carnatic music from certain boundaries historically, uh, man-made, all of these things. According to you, what is your vision of an ideal world of art? Well, it's for me, my biggest starting point is dramatic music. That's the art I know. But I guess this kind of conditions and this kind of limitations are there in every art form. Every art form is limited by the limitations that human beings have put on ourselves, which includes color, race, ethnicity, religion. Gender. In fact, I think gender is the biggest issue that we very, very conveniently do not talk about. You must remember that gender affects, in fact, the uh, discrimination of gender is what, in fact, in, creates the engine for race discrimination, for ethnicity discrimination, for caste discrimination, for color discrimination, for religious discrimination. And the most vulnerable people in this are women in all cases. So um, it's human tendency to segregate and create hierarchies and make one better than the other. And in subtle and not so, so subtle fashions, pass judgment on the rest. It's human nature to do that. So this is not a Carnatic phenomenon. My starting point is Carnatic music because I belong to that little world. So um, I don't know what ideal world, but they probably will. It's not going to be an ideal. But I think if we can allow 
I, you know, art films are a great way to enter, enter people, communities, and their lives and their cultures. And uh, through that, you kind of see a beauty of communities that you disregarded or you've not even noticed. We all have communities that we've not noticed. And if you come from a community that is culturally privileged, and I want to emphasize the idea of cultural privilege. People think that economic privilege is the fundamental thing in life. No, cultural privilege is. You may be economically poor, but if you have cultural privilege, you will still be respected. Okay? But if you don't have cultural privilege and you have a lot of money, you will, your money will be respected. You will not be respected. You have to understand this great nuance in human behavior. And therefore, if you come from cultural privilege, I think you also have to think about these things as much as everybody else needs to. And therefore, there's no ideal world. But for me, if it's possible for us to create platforms where we allow different art forms and automatically people from different communities to kind of mingle in a way they will not normally. And I'm talking about actually see each other, actually feel each other. I'm not talking about going to a store and buying something. You know? Uh, I, just because somebody goes to a store, or if, if, I, if I go to a store owned by a, by a Muslim and I've bought my provisions from there for 10 years, it doesn't mean I don't have Islamophobia. We make, we just better remember that. And just because you have a Muslim friend does not mean that you don't have Islamophobia. You can have still Islamophobia and have a Muslim friend. And it will pop up when, the, when you push to that corner, that phobia will pop up. So if we can free ourselves and do art, you know, if you can just, just, to art, understand the nuances of cultures, understand the nuances of, of uh, different communities. I think the ideal world is allowed for this kind of movement. And the truth is we're not going to have an ideal world. Right? But I think if these questions can remain alive, and we can always be challenging these things, that's an ideal world. There will be disturbances, there will be problems, but at least we'll be alive challenging all these notions. Discussing them, debating them, and doing things that make celebration more overall and wholesome. I think it's possible. I think it's possible. I don't, and I want to say whatever I'm doing, I'm not saying I, the results of, I, people ask me what is the result. I really don't know what the result is. And honestly, I don't know. The result may happen after I'm dead and gone. I don't know. It may not happen. That's also possible. Can't stop us. Brahmani Manasasancharare Brahmani Manasasancharare Brahmani Manasasancharare Brahmani Manasasancharare Brahmani Manasasancharare Brahmani Manasasancharare